good day. So, uh, here I will discuss to you the introduction of the subject radiographic anatomy. So, since two weeks na tayong uh, hindi nakapag-meet, so because of some reasons, and uh, this will be my way of uh, compensating for the lost time, and I hope you will be able to to hear, to watch this, and learn from this, as uh, there will be times na yung mga lectures natin is through these uh, video lectures. Uh, if, especially those times na I will not be able to meet with you because of some important matters. Sige, so we will start. So, the radiographic anatomy is your gateway, your introduction for your radiographic positioning subject, which will be during your third year. So, we will have first the uh, a brief, brief review of what you have learned in your human anatomy and physiology during the previous semester. So, we will start with the levels of organization. Actually, it refers to component units of the human body which are actually four but in some references there are five components and we will discuss each uh, briefly so since this is just a review of your human anatomy and physiology so we will start first with the cells so sir cells these are the smallest unit the basic component of the human body So cells, they combine and to form tissues. And tissues, they combine to form organs. And organs, they combine, they combine to form organ systems. So those are the four component units of the human body. And uh, just like what I have mentioned, so in some references, there are five. So the number five is... The organism or the individual so organ systems like we have the reproductive system we have the digestive system circulatory system so all of those systems organ systems combine to form an organism or an individual so life is organized into different levels based on the size so, actually, from smallest to largest, so just like what we have discussed, so we started with the smallest, which is the cell, and the largest, which is the organism or the... So, some organisms are unicellular. So, when we say unicellular, so as what you have learned from your uh, anatomy, or a medical term, uni means single. So, unicellular means that there are some organisms that have only one cell. And one of the most common examples for that is the bacteria and as well as the amoeba. So, meaning, one amoeba or one bacterium, bacterium if singular, bacteria if plural, pag marami sila, pero a single amoeba has only one cell just like what you can see is a picture so this is one amoeba sorry how do i this so this is one amoeba and it is it is also composed of one cell so the body is also as uh, is also the cell of the amoeba it has one nucleus and other uh, parts of the organism or the cell. While there are also some organisms that are multicellular. So, uni is one, one cell. Multicellular is multi, so meaning there are many cells. This means that these uh, organisms are made up of many cells, just like most common example, of course, the humans, who are composed of millions or even billions of cells. The trees are the plants as well as the animals. So, just like the frog. So, bucket frog? So, frog, uh, it is the most common uh, animal 
na ginagamit natin especially for uh, dissecting to study the internal parts of an organism. So, unicellular organisms have nothing but a single cell. So, just like what I have mentioned, single cell siya because it is unicellular. However, multicellular organisms have many more levels of organization, just like what we have dis discussed, we have, uh, I have mentioned, we have the cells, tissues, organs, organ systems. To make sure that the whole body work correctly, even when it's doing many things at the same time. So, kung paga, pag ang isang organism, just like humans, they are composed of many cells, they can also multitask. So, they can do many things at the same time. But of course, siyempre, depende pa rin yan sa skill ng tao. Hindi lahat ng tao pwede makapag-multitask or kaya mag-multitask, di ba? Usually, pag, uh, ang sabi nila, according sa mga studies, yung mga lalaki, nahihirapan silang mag-multitask. Pero yung babae, so they can do many things at the same time. So that is according to study. Baka i-bash nyo ako eh. Sabihin nyo, kaya rin naman namin eh. Okay? So, here we have uh, different levels of organization from atoms to molecules to cells. Actually, we have started with the cells. But, uh, again, be known that there are still much smaller components of the body. Aside from the cell, we have atoms and molecules up to the organism. So, the cell. The cell is the basic unit of life and are specialized by size and shape. So, the size and the shape of the cells determines their function or their jobs. So, these are examples of cells. So, the one that is moving here, as you can see, is called a paramecium. So, it is an organism. Usually, they are living in fresh water. The paramecium above is made of only one cell and it must perform all the jobs of the organism. So, although it has only one cell, still it can perform uh, different functions. So, most, example, most common example ng cell is the skin cell, which are uh, the ano ba tawag doon? The fast test. Fast test mag -re regenerate. So, it can regenerate, it can reproduce within 24 hours. So, if you have noticed, kung uh, kung may aksidente, minor accident, may scratches, so usually, after 24 hours, medyo uh, nagihilom na siya. So, these are the different types of cells in the body. We have stem cells or the youngest. Young cells, the youngest cells is like what we have discussed in our, uh, sorry, sa third year pala yan. So, stem cells or the youngest cells of all. So, the stem cells can, from the bone marrow, they are nourished, they are nurtured inside the bone marrow, and once they become mature or adults, they can become uh, anything. They can, I mean, they can become any cells. So, from stem cells, it can regenerate to bone cells, to blood cells, muscle cells, etc. And also, stem cells, if they are abnormal, uh, if they have abnormal parents during their mitosis phase, so they can also result to become a cancer cell. So, have you heard of a stem cell therapy? I'm sure you have. So, uh, mas komo na ginagamit yung stem cell therapy if one is suffering from a certain condition or if one wants to look uh, younger, vigorous, functioning. Because, for example, 
if you have a saggy face, kasi medyo matanda na, marami ng wrinkles, if you want to regenerate new skin para mamukhang mas bata, mas glowing, so they will use stem cells because it can regenerate to become a skin cell which is, uh, again, it will look younger because it comes from the younger or the youngest cell, which is the stem cells. So, for your assignment, so, uh, in a, I think, one half siguro, in a one half yellow pad crosswise, so, determine the functions of each cell. So, kung ano yung pinaka, yung main function lang, at mga one-liner siguro, one sentence. Okay, that will be your assignment, and it will be, sub it must be submitted next meeting, which is next week. So, before we proceed to another topic, I have here a video and uh, this is to let you understand better these uh, levels of organization. If you had to think back about the most exciting day you ever had in a science classroom, which day would that be? Now, looking back through the years, we have a few. The time we participated in an earthworm dissection, the time we took apart an owl pellet, the osmosis eggs, all of the fruit flies and genetic experiments. Oh, I could go on. But I will never forget one day in my ninth grade science class. My teacher brought in pond water. And I put one drop of pond water on a microscope slide and saw the most amazing thing ever. I saw an amoeba. A single-celled amoeba on that microscope slide, and I was forever stuck on science from that point on. Because I could not believe that this little cell was there, alive on this slide, still eating because that's what amoebas do a lot. But to imagine that every person is actually made of billions of cells, of course, not amoeba cells, but animal cells. Billions of animal cells. That's fascinating. In fact, it really makes you reflect on some of the incredible statements of the modern cell theory. The modern cell theory includes the following. First, that the cell is the smallest living unit in all organisms. And second, that all living things are made of cells. One or more cells. The amoeba I observed was a single-celled organism. So, unicellular. Humans are made of many cells, so multicellular. And third, all cells come from other pre-existing cells. You know, cells have their own little world inside them. They carry genetic information, they can divide, many have functions and processes that their organelles, structures inside them, can take care of. On our planet, we can divide cells into two major groups. As a cell, you're either a prokaryote or a eukaryote. Bacteria and RK are prokaryotes, but everything else, plants, animals, fungi, protists, are eukaryotes. Both prokaryotes and eukaryotes have genetic material. Both have cytoplasm. Both have ribosomes, which are small organelles that make protein. Both have cell membranes, which control what goes in and out of the cell. But what makes them different is a big deal. Prokaryote the pro rhymes with no, and they have no nucleus, which holds the genetic material and controls the cell's activities. Prokaryotes have no membrane-bound organelles. Membrane-bound organelles are fancy organelles like the nucleus and mitochondria and Golgi apparatus. Eukaryotes, the U rhymes with do, they do have membrane-bound organelles. So now you may be wondering, well, what do the organelles do? What are their functions? Well, you know our style. We love our science with a side of comics. So we want to take you on a tour of the ride of your life into the inside of a cell. Now, to start our trip, we're going to have to get through this cell membrane, also called a plasma membrane. It's selectively permeable, which means that it'll only let certain select materials in and out. But by doing so, it keeps things in the cell stable, also known as keeping homeostasis. And we have an entire video on just the membrane itself, which is found in all cells. But for now, we're just going to have to squeeze through this protein in the membrane. 
Now, inside the cell, we find ourselves in this jelly-like material called cytoplasm. It surrounds all these internal cell structures, and you'll find it inside both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Now, organelles that are floating around in the cytoplasm can have more support than you might think. Cells contain a cytoskeleton, which is a collection of fibers that can provide support for the cell and its organelles. And the cytoskeleton can even play a major role in cell movement. The cytoskeleton actually deserves its own video because it's very complex and its organization can vary depending on what kind of cell you're looking at. Moving through the cytoplasm, let's start with ribosomes. They are not membrane-bound organelles and they're going to be in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. They make protein, which is really important because that's what so much of genetic material, DNA, codes for, protein. Ribosomes can be free in the cytoplasm, but they can be attached to another organelle too, which we'll talk about a little bit later. We're now going to focus on organelles that will be membrane bound. So we're going to be focusing on organelles that you would find in a eukaryote cell. This takes our travel to the big boss, the nucleus. Now in eukaryotes, it holds the genetic material. Genetic material as in DNA, for example. Both prokaryotes and eukaryotes have DNA, but if you're a eukaryote, you have a nucleus to put it in. And the nucleus controls the cell's activities, and inside it, it has a nucleolus, which is where ribosomes can be produced. Attached to the membrane of the nucleus, or nuclear membrane, you will find the endoplasmic reticulum, ER for short. It does a lot of processing of molecules for the cell, like protein folding, and it's highly involved in actually transporting those molecules around, like a highway. And there's a rough ER, which has ribosomes attached to it, making it, as you can imagine, rough, and then smooth ER, which doesn't have the ribosomes. Rough ER specifically tends to be involved with protein producing and transporting, because remember that ribosomes make protein. Now, molecules that leave the ER can be sent away in vesicles that actually pinch off the ER themselves. Now, smooth ER has many additional roles, including detoxification, which is one reason why your liver cells tend to have a lot of smooth ER. And another additional role of smooth ER is that it can make some types of lipids. Next, the Golgi apparatus it's the ultimate packaging center. It can receive items from the transport vesicles that pinched off the ER. It has enzymes that can modify molecules it may receive and sorts the material it receives as well. It can determine where to send those molecules, including some that may eventually be sent to the membrane so they can be secreted, which means items that can be sent out of the cell. So with all that's going on in here, you might start to wonder, what's powering this thing? The mighty mitochondria or mitochondrion, if you're just talking about one. They're like power plants. The mitochondria make ATP energy in a process called cellular respiration. Now, it's not the type of power plant that you might think of. It runs on glucose, which is a sugar, and it needs the presence of oxygen to efficiently make ATP energy. Now, at this point, we need to mention that eukaryotes are not a one-size-fits-all. Animal cells can have differences from plant cells. We have a fork in the road here. For example, plant cells not only have mitochondria, but they can also have these awesome organelles called chloroplasts. Chloroplasts actually make glucose by using light energy in a process known as photosynthesis. They tend to even have a green look to them because they have a pigment that captures the light energy and it reflects green light. Now, both plant and animal cells can have vacuoles. Now, vacuoles can have a lot of different functions, but many types act as storage of materials. Plant cells can have one large vacuole called a central vacuole, while animal cells can have smaller, several vacuoles. Now, remember how we already said that all cells have membranes? They do. But plant cells additionally can have a cell wall, which is a layer that offers additional protection and shape maintenance that animal cells do not. Hmm. Okay, now how do we get out of this animal cell that we've been in? Well, we could get out like a protein would. So if we were a protein, we would only be made because of instructions from DNA. And remember that in eukaryotes, DNA is found in the nucleus. We would be made by a ribosome because ribosomes make protein. The ribosomes could be attached to the rough ER 
and the rough ER highway would provide a vesicle to send us to the Golgi apparatus where sorting can take place. And if we're tagged for being secreted, we could be sent off through a vesicle from the Golgi to the membrane. Out we go. Now just keep in mind that in our quick tour, there are still so many more awesome organelles found in lots of different types of eukaryote cells to continue exploring. So to the Google for more. Well, that's it for the Beba sisters, and we remind you to stay curious. If you had a So we are uh, we are done with the cells, just like uh, a, a bit of a, an introduction, and as well as the components of the cells also were uh, roughly discussed in the video. So next are the tissues in our body. So uh, we have different tissues in our body, just like in the uh, picture here. We have smooth muscle tissues, cardiac muscle tissues, connective tissues, etc. So tissues are made of the same type of cells which are grouped together to do a specific job. So just like in one of the previous slides, I have mentioned that cells combine to form tissues. So actually they are the same cells that combine to form tissues. For example, if we are talking about the liver tissues or the tissues found in the liver so they are composed of uh, liver cells or hepatic cells so they form together to find to form they they sorry they come together they form together to make up the tissue so again humans have four kinds of tissue and they are the epithelial muscle and connecti connective and nerve tissues so this is how they look like and they are under the microscope so we have here the connect so connective tissue as well as the nerve tissue muscle endothelial so sorry I skipped that one so I don't know how to 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 return but let's proceed to organs so organs are made up of different tissues that work together to do a job so just like the tissues so the cells the same cells combine to form tissues as well as the same tissues combined to form organs. So the most common example is obviously the heart. So these are examples also of the different organs in our body. We have the brain, the larynx, the liver, stomach, large intestine, small intestine, lungs, heart, and so on. Next are the organ systems. So an organ system is a group of organs working together. Can you guess what picture is this? Picture of what? So while you're thinking, so examples of organ systems include circulatory, reproductive system, digestive, nervous, and respiratory. So let's go back to this picture. What is this? You get did you get get did you get it? So it's a frog. So dissected frog. So we have here again the actually there are uh, references that says that there are only eleven organ systems, but in other references. They have listed 12. So we have digestive, muscular, integumentary or the skin, the lymphatic system, endocrine, 
nervous, circulatory, urinary, respiratory, female reproductive, male reproductive system, and skeletal system. So, actually, there are 11. So, 11 naman talaga because naging 12 is a picture because they have separated the male and the female reproductive organs. So, if we combine reproductive organs, there are still 11 human body organ systems. So, that's another video that I recommend you to watch. Have you ever heard the phrase, I know this like the back of my hand? Well, it might make you question, do you really know the back of your hand? Because if you really look at your hand, you see your skin, but it's also what you can't see underneath that's pretty incredible. You can't see the millions of cells that make up your hand, at least not without a microscope. We take these cells for granted sometimes, but your body is made up of millions of cells. Cells that work together, cells that are very organized with specific functions, cells that carry your whole DNA code, but use specific parts of your DNA code depending on the cell's function. Your cells make up body tissues. Tissues make up organs, like your heart, for example. And organs are part of an organ system, like your circulatory system. Organ systems are so important for you to understand in order to know how your body works. And one thing to keep in mind is that organ systems, they don't work in isolation. They are not loners. No, they work together and they're part of a big team. So we're going to intro the 11 major organ systems. Now, keep in mind, this is just a quick intro. So we're doing the bare bones no pun intended, of the systems. And because they are all important, it's kind of hard to know where to start. So we're going to go in alphabetical order because we don't want you to think that one system is way more important than another. First, the circulatory system. You think of blood, and you should, because blood carries gases like oxygen, which your body needs, and helps remove carbon dioxide, which your body needs to expel. Your blood also transports nutrients that your body needs. Your heart is included in the system. It's a pumping machine that transports the blood around. Arteries are vessels that typically carry blood away from the heart. Think A for away. And veins typically carry blood back to the heart. And capillaries are tiny blood vessels throughout your body. Did you ever hear this rumor that your blood is blue and then turns red when it reaches oxygen? Well, guess what? That's not really true. Your blood is red. It's always red, even inside your body. Though the shade of red can vary slightly due to the amount of oxygen present. Veins may appear blue or even green to you through the skin, but it's actually related to the wavelengths of light, so to the Google for that. Okay, number two, the digestive system. It's important for breaking down and absorbing food for your body to get nutrients. Digestion actually starts in the mouth. You have some awesome enzymes in your saliva that get this process going. Your stomach contains acid, which furthers this process along. Your small intestine does most of the absorption of nutrients, and your large intestine has to reabsorb a lot of the water from this process. And just to note, there are a lot of accessory organs also involved in this fascinating process. Third, the endocrine system. You know how you're bigger than you were when you were six years old? Unless you are six years old. Growth hormone is a hormone that's made a big impact on you. Or another example, notice how your heart starts to race when you have a big test that maybe you haven't studied for. Well, that's another hormone, adrenaline. The endocrine system includes many glands that secrete hormones like those examples. Another system that starts with E is number four, the excretory system. I like to think exit for excretory because this system is all about excreting waste. And I'm not talking about feces because that's still the digestive system. More like urine. This system involves your kidneys, which are in your lower back. The kidneys assist in removing waste from the blood. And you know they're important because anyone with impaired kidneys may need to go on a machine called dialysis, 
to replace that function. The excretory system also includes other ways of removing waste, such as sweating. Okay, number five, the integumentary system. This long, fancy word, it's appropriate for your largest organ, your skin. Your skin helps protect your organs from outside damage. It helps with temperature regulation and from losing precious water. Number six, the lymphatic slash immune system. Has anyone ever checked your lymph nodes on your neck when you feel sick? Well, you have many lymph nodes, and they tend to swell during some illnesses. See, lymph is this clear fluid from blood plasma. It surrounds your cells, and this system collects, filters, and returns the lymph to blood, and the major role is to help with immune function. This keeps your body safe against pathogens like viruses and bacteria. Structures like lymph nodes, the thymus, spleen, tonsils, and bone marrow, they all play a significant role in your immune system. Okay, so now we're more than halfway done with our intro, so hang in there. Number seven, the muscular system. No bones about it. Your bones can't do much without muscle to move them. You actually have three major types of muscle tissue, known as skeletal, smooth, and cardiac muscle. Number eight, the nervous system. Your body would be a nervous wreck without something to coordinate it. That always helps me remember it. The nervous system includes your brain and your spinal cord. It controls voluntary actions. That's what you can control, like picking up a pencil. And involuntary actions, the ones you can't control, such as reflexes. At the cellular level, the nervous system uses cells known as neurons. With their amazing structure, these cells are kind of the cool cells on the block. Number nine, the reproductive system. Like it sounds, this system includes reproductive <laughs> organs. The major function here is that it allows for animals to reproduce. So think babies. Number 10, the respiratory system. This involves the lungs, and this system involves the intake of oxygen into the body and exhaling carbon dioxide from the body. Remember that your cells need this oxygen, and they need to get rid of carbon dioxide in order to function correctly. Number 11, the skeletal system, bones. Adults have 206 bones and you had more at birth, but some bones they fuse together and these bones support you. They protect your organs, think rib cage, and they even produce blood cells from the bone marrow that's inside the bone. Understanding how the human body works is fascinating, and it's necessary so that we can figure out what to do when things go wrong. There are doctors that specialize specifically with each of these systems, but the most amazing part to us is their beauty and how they work together, working every second to let you do the things that you do. Want an example? Well, let's say that when the bell rings at the end of the day, you're going to race your friend down the hall. Think of all the body systems interacting for that to happen. Your respiratory system is going to increase its breathing rate, and that extra oxygen is going to be delivered throughout the circulatory system to your body tissues. Your muscles are interacting with the skeletal system for movement. These are just some interactions of the systems working together for that one example. The human body is just truly a magnificent masterpiece. Well, that's it for the Amita Sisters, and we remind you to stay curious. Okay, so uh, I hope you have learned something from that video. So you should also study that because they are very important also in understanding how our body works, especially when we deal with our uh, patients later so that we will be able to understand why they are behaving this way, that way or this way and how to take care of them also, especially when uh, positioning them for radiographic examinations. So next we have the organisms. So all cells, tissues, organs, and organ systems, they work together to make up an organism, just like what we have been uh, talking about. So here, just like sa examples, uh, this is a video. So every organ, every muscle, every tissues, every cells, every color, every you represents me and you. Okay. 
So before we proceed for the next topic, so I, I will cut it here. Kasi mahirap mag-upload na medyo malaking file size. So I will uh, send out a link for uh, different lectures. So magkakasunod naman yan. So uh, until here na muna and then I will inform or update you again. So if I have uh, uploaded uh, the continuation of this video. So again, good day and thank you for watching and listening.